Hello, my name is Ed Callahan. I work for Institutional Planning Assessment and Research, IPAR, at Winona State University. In this presentation, I'm going to walk you through an enrollment projection model we use here to predict headcounts and FTEs in future years based on um, what we think will be the new entering freshmen and new entering transfer counts uh, going forward. What we're looking at here are new entering freshmen, new entering transfer, and new entering graduate counts for historic fall terms when we take most of our new entering freshman students. You can see that um, in fall 2008 we had a historic high new entering freshman count um, well above previous years, a little bit of a decline in fall 2009 and then a plunge in fall 2010 last fall um, to almost fall 2004 levels. Uh, this year we've seen an increase almost within a couple of students to that historic level we had last fall. At the same time, our new entering freshman counts have been steady and increasing recently, and our new entering graduate counts aren't a huge part of enrollment at Winona State University. Given this, flex this fluctuations, um, it becomes hard to predict in the future you know, how all these peaks and valleys are going to percolate through the system and affect um, current and future head counts. Um, Given all that variability we just saw, it might be surprising for you to see that the increase in our total headcount at Winona State University has been pretty steady. A little bit of a decrease last year when we had that real small new entry freshman count, but on the on uh, basically a lot less variation in headcount than we see in those new entry freshman classes. So the goal of our model is to predict future total headcount FTEs. Uh, given all that fluctuation in new entering class sizes and to set goals for admissions for those new entering counts um, so that we, our total FTEs don't get too high or too low for um, what the institution finds comfortable. Also annually, actually biannually, our parent organization, the Minnesota um, State Colleges and Universities, asks us for enrollment projections. That process used to be um, pretty stressful, pretty time consuming, fairly ad hoc in a manual process uh, for our institutional research office. Our goal was to make it um, quick and easy and get do something reasonable um, in a reproducible fashion and take that workload um, out of our office. So here's the model. Um, take a minute to read it and then if you have any questions go ahead and email me. Now actually this looks compl complicated but in just a minute you're going to understand this entire model. So this is how we think about modeling enrollment here. How many freshmen will we have next term, um, this coming spring term at Winona State? Well, we'll take in some new freshmen. We have um, students enter the university in spring. Plus we'll have some freshmen who are returning to the university. Those returning students, um, returning freshmen, are students who were retained from the previous term and didn't advance, um, meaning they didn't become a sophomore. So how many sophomores will we have next term? Some students will enter the university as sophomores. Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior is based on how many credits you have. Some transfers will have enough credits to be classified sophomores when they get here. Also we'll have sophomores from the previous term who retained and did not become juniors. They didn't advance. We'll also have some freshmen from the previous term who were retained and did advance. Similarly for juniors and seniors, um, just like the sophomores except seniors don't advance. Uh, graduate students and kind of other um, specials, um, extension students, stuff like that. Um, students, uh, these students also don't advance, and, uh, but they, they do have retention rates. That's all you need to know to understand this model. Let me walk you through it. Our head count at some term is the number of new freshmen entering that term plus the number of freshmen from the previous term who were retained and did not advance. So if A is the advancement rate for freshmen, then 1 minus A is the non-advance rate. The next line is for sophomores. Number of sophomores is the number of new sophomores at this term plus the number of freshmen from the previous term who were retained and advanced 
plus the number of sophomores from the previous term were retained and didn't advance. The same for juniors and the same for seniors except for the seniors um, advancement rate um, is zero so that just turns into a one falls out of the model. Graduate students and others we just talk about the number of new graduates and others coming into the system and the retention rates and we don't model advancement rates. So there are a lot of variables that need to be estimated. The counts in bold are known numbers. We know how many students were enrolled in the previous term. But we need to, we need to predict how many new students are entering the system, the retention rates for each of these classifications, and the advancement rates for each of these classifications. How do we estimate these uh, variables? For the retention and advancement rates, we look at the most previous, the previous most recent three years observed values for those retention and advancement rates class by class and we do a weighted average of those weighting the most recent values heavier. We estimate all those variables separately for spring to fall rates, spring to fall retention advancement rates and for fall to spring. We have a separate set of estimates for each of those transitions. Um, summer estimates, we estimate summer counts directly based on weighted averages of the three most recent summers class by class. We don't use those retention and advancement rates to estimate summer enrollment. We handle those T values, those new entering counts, differently. For spring, we use weighted averages of new entering counts from previous spring terms. For fall, for basically local cultural reasons, we like to think about new entering freshmen and new entering transfer 10th day counts. Uh, those are the metrics that our enrollment analytics team looks at. Um, those are the numbers I showed you on those graphs earlier in the presentation. Those are the numbers that the admissions office types to control, attempts to control. Those two values, fall 10th day new entering freshmen and new entering transfer counts, are inputs to our model. They're specified when you run the model. Uh, so there's a kind of another calculation uh, model almost that I'm not going to show you right now that takes those new entry freshmen and transfer counts and splits them into all those different fall T counts. Uh, a lot, most of the freshmen come in as freshmen, but some bring in high school credits and they have to be distributed up into like sophomore junior status even. And the transfers come in all over the place. And so there's a little bit of work that goes into um, distributing those model inputs into those T values for the fall. Our fall new entering graduate counts are estimated directly from previous observed values from the three most um, recent fall terms. So here's a model output. The red line are observed FTEs. I'm switching, we've looked at head counts earlier. We're going to look at FTEs now. We can um, translate from head count to FTEs just by getting average number of credits per student for each of those categories. Um, our model actually does that. The red line here, whoops, there we go. Our red line here shows actually observed FTEs. This looks like a really steep line, a lot of movement, but if you notice the, the axis here, I start at 7,800. Just makes the differences look bigger. This number here is the estimated FTEs for Winona State University that we think we'll see at the end of this current fiscal year, FY 2012. The number um, is the same regardless of the model inputs. We've, we've, we've run this with three sets of model inputs, 1800 uh, new entry freshmen and 550 new entry transfers, 1750 and 550 and 1850 new entry freshmen and 550 new entry transfers. We've run the model three different ways and showing you the output here. Each of those model runs produces the same FY 2012 estimate because the 2012 new entry freshmen and new entry transfer counts are already known because we're past the 10th day. This is a record high FTE count for Winona State University. We've never been over 8,600 FTEs before. I'm not sure if you would have predicted that based on the record low new entering counts we saw last year, but maybe you would have knowing that this year was a big number and the two years prior to that were big numbers. If our model suggests that if we for the next three years 
take in 1,800 new entering freshmen, which is less than we've been getting, um, except for last year, and about 550 new entering transfers, we will have a basically stable to slightly increasing total FTEs. That's probably what we want. 1,800 and 550 are actually the goals that have been set for our admissions office for next year. If we leave that new entry transfer count alone and drop our new entry freshman count by 50 stu students, we'll see that will result in a declining, slowly but steadily declining overall FTE rate. If we bounce that 1,800 up to 1,850 students, leaving the transfers alone, we'll see uh, a slightly increasing new entering freshman count, uh, total FTE count, I'm sorry. So this is really a pretty simple model. I mean, we're just looking at new entering freshmen, um, new entering transfer inputs, and we're just estimating a bunch of advancement and retention rates. It, it ignores a lot of things. Uh, we look at retention advancement rates, but really retention rate isn't the way we normally think of it, and we're not really looking at graduation rates. We're kind of lumping those concepts that IR is used to looking at just into these um, kind of dumb term-to-term -term advancement and retention rates. We treat seniors as one group, you know, but we know it takes five or six years for students to graduate. We could look at fourth, fifth, and sixth year seniors. Winona State actually has two campuses. We don't look at campuses, um, what the trends are on the Rochester campus versus the campus here in Winona. We ignore student demographics, uh, gender, ethnicity. We ignore declared majors, uh, what's going on in individual colleges. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that we're ignoring. Um, and you could call our model overly simplistic, or you could call it um, not unnecessarily complicated. Uh, if you remember the goals we set for ourselves, they're pretty simple. You know, we want to set some goals for the future for admissions. We want to have a basic understanding of how these new entering transfer counts project into the future, and, and to just to get some quick estimates for MinSKU. Um, I'm going to justify ignoring all these factors based on how accurate our model has been in practice. Here's some model val validation data. Um, and what I'm doing is looking at how would our model do if we knew exactly what the new entering freshman and new entering transfer count was going to be for the next year. For instance, what if in fall of 2009 I tried to predict the following fiscal year head count? knowing exactly how many new entry freshmen transfers there was going to be in that fiscal year. So what if I had to estimate the headcount and, and FTEs for sp the following spring of fiscal year uh, 2010 and then the summer, spring, and fall term of fiscal year 2011? The actual FTEs that we saw for 2011 was 8,279. The predicted FTEs from the model would have been 83.11. Uh, we would have overestimated by only 0.4%. In the previous four years, the model would have underestimated, but by very small amounts. I mean, a 1 to 2% error rate on an enrollment prediction model like this is, 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 I think, very good. So I think that our model is performing just fine. We don't need to try to incorporate more variables into it because it's doing its job just as, uh, just as well as we need it to do. So that's my presentation for you. Um, there's more information about the model. You can see the, um, ex an Excel document that implements the model. There's a white paper and a longer PowerPoint without my voice, all available at this URL. Um, my name is Ed Callahan, and please feel free to email me uh, if you have any questions. I appreciate you taking the time to listen.